Go ahead, please. In 2018, Roger Federer broke the internet when he answered this innocent question from a fan. Are tennis balls green or yellow? Yellow, Federer replied. But the balls we are so familiar with didn't always look this way. Before 1972, tennis balls were either black or white, depending on the colour of the court surface. At various points, they were made of wood, leather, twine and eventually rubber wrapped with felt. But the story of the modern tennis ball begins more than 50 years ago in the United Kingdom with the fight to get television broadcast in colour. Most of the initiating credit goes to Sir David Attenborough, yes, the famous voice behind the Life in Colour and Planet Earth documentaries. In the 1960s, he was controller of BBC Two and leading the drive to make Great Britain the first country in Europe to make the switch from black and white television to colour. The USA and Japan had already launched colour TV, with West Germany close as well. Attenborough didn't want the UK to be left behind. We had been asking the government over and over again and they wouldn't allow us, he recalled in 2017, until suddenly they said, yes, OK, you can have it. So I had to predict when we would start, and in a childish sort of way I wanted to be first. The challenge was cost, with colour broadcasting requiring more advanced cameras, which had to broadcast in black and white too given the lack of coloured TVs in homes at the time. BBC Two was given the nod for colour broadcasts in 1966, and Attenborough hit upon the idea of making Wimbledon a pilot. It suddenly dawned on me that the one thing we did have was outside broadcast units. I thought, blimey, couldn't we deploy them? And then I thought of Wimbledon. I mean, it's a wonderful plot. You've got the drama, you've got everything. And it's a national event. It's got everything going for it. So it was that the 1967 Wimbledon Championships became the first ever UK television programme broadcast in colour. John Newcomb and Billie Jean King would raise the trophies that summer. I was proud as a peacock, Attenborough said. It was absolutely terrific. It was a big moment in my life. It was a huge milestone, but not without its complications. Colour TV made the white tennis ball hard to see. ESPN Vice President of Production Jamie Reynolds recalled the white ball days of Wimbledon. They always turned green from grass stains, he said. They blended so much with the grass, the visuals were compromised. Remember, there was no HD then. Enter Mike Davies, a future tennis hall of famer, who was Great Britain's number one player in the 1950s and early 1960s. In 1968, he was hired by the World Championship Tennis Tour to radically alter the sport's rather staid public perception. With the WCT, the first tournament series to be broadcast on national television, Davies set about making tennis more viewer and broadcaster friendly. His innovations included the addition of coloured clothing, making it easier to differentiate between the players, the first use of the tiebreaker to shorten matches and add an element of drama, the introduction of 90 second time changeovers to allow for TV commercial breaks, making the sport more marketable and the use of coloured tennis balls. An ITF back study tested a few different colours. Orange was considered briefly before yellow was declared the best solution and introduced into WCT in 1972. The ITF amended the rulebook to reflect this addition, but it didn't spell an immediate end to white balls. In fact, the ITF rulebook still lists the official colour as white or yellow. The move away from white was gradual, and Wimbledon, ever the traditionalist, didn't implement yellow balls until 1986. Davies worked tirelessly to get tennis more television coverage. His efforts paid off when the 1972 WTC final in Dallas between Ken Rosewell and Rod Laver drew more than 21 million viewers in the US, an astonishing number for the time. When we tune into Wimbledon, the scene will be recognisable to everyone under 60 who has watched the sport since childhood. Yellow balls on a lush green background and players sat at a changeover before a tiebreak. But we would not have that without Attenborough's foresight and Davies' innovation. The game had no choice but to move and improve with the times. We can thank them both for giving us tennis in colour.